In this video, the first part I'm going to do is configure OSPF authentication. This is going to be part one. I'll probably have to split this up in two parts because it'll be too long for me to upload to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and first configure the topology, give the routers their names and IP addresses. I'll configure the loopback interfaces and OSPF. Okay, the topology is going to be two 1841 routers. I'll have a hub or a switch is fine. I think in the um, document it uses a hub. You can use a switch either way. Okay, so let's take a look at our routers first and let's power them down. Let's add our modules. Okay. Once you've added your modules, power it up. Do the same for the other router. Power this one down. Okay, now let's just go ahead and put our cables in. We need a straight from the PC to the hub. We need a straight from the hub to the router. We need a serial connection from router to router. and need a crossover from PC to router. Okay, we've cabled up. Now let's go ahead and configure the routers with the correct information. Okay. So I enable and I config T. This router is going to be the Dublin, so host Dublin. Then interface fast Ethernet 00. IP address, and let me just go ahead and take a look at what we need to enter. Okay, 192.168.1.129. Subnet mass 255.255.255.192. No shutdown. And we'll go to our interface serial 000. IP address is 192.168.1.0. I'm sorry, 1.1. 1 .1. 255.255.255.255.252. This one's going to have the clock rate. 64,000. No shutdown. And let's also do our interface loop back 0. IP address. IP address is 192.168, so 3111. There we go. Let's end and copy run start. Now let's go over to our Washington router and begin configuring those interfaces. Enable, config T, inter host Washington. Interface Fast Ethernet 00. IP address 192.168.0.1. If 
255.255.255.0 no shutdown An interface serial 000 IP address 192.168.1.2 255.255.255 not 252. No shutdown. Okay, now we need our interface loop zero. We're doing a loop back on this one as well. And this one should be IP address 192.168.0. 31.22 Okay, let's end. Copy, run, start. Do a show IP interface brief. And you can see that everything should be up. Okay. Great, now we can configure our OSPF statements. And this should be pretty easy. I'm going to start with the Washington router. Go config T, router OSPF1, network 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.3, area 0, network 192.168.0.0. 0.0.0.255 area 0 end copy run start great let's go to our Dublin router and do the same there enable config T router OSPF1 Network statements are going to be 192.168.1.0.0.0.3, area 0, network. Now this one's a tricky one. We show the IP address for one of the networks is 192.168.1.129. Well, the network statement is actually 192.168.128. .1.128 is the network statement. If you're not sure what the network is, you can always just put the IP address. So let's do that again. Network 192.168.1.129 and you'll see in a minute what shows up. Uh, 0 .0 0.0.0.63 area 0. So copy, run, start. And you can do a show run and you'll notice in your network statements that you just entered, notice that the network showed up as 192.168.1.128. So you put the IP address in the network statement. And the router knew to change that to a network statement and it found the correct network. So if you're not sure what you should enter there for the network, type in the whole IP address and the router will figure it out for you. It's a great little trick. Okay. So, did we do a copy run start on this one? If we didn't, do it. Great, let's do a show IP route. You'll see your OSPF statement is now showing up. This means OSPF is running correctly. Let's go over to our Washington router and do show IP route. OSPF statement is there. So this completes the first part of OSPF authentication. The next video is going to do the commands for authentication.